Hello, everyone. Let me adjust my camera a bit for you guys. Hi. Oh, hello, Joanna. It's your first webinar. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome, all you guys. Welcome, welcome. Hi, everyone. I see it's a it's a few of your guys' first webinars, huh? So welcome. You're in for a special treat. You're here for a wild ride of parasites tonight. So buckle up, you guys, because it's going to be fun. Um, oh, thank you so much. Someone loves my shirt. So um, welcome, you guys. Good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon. Who's excited? Raise your hand. I'm glad you guys are here. Um, it's super fun to have these webinars with everyone and to talk about exciting things like drainage pathways and parasites. Maybe we'll do a mold one um, sometimes uh, some for you guys as well, too. I think that's a big interest of yours. But tonight, the star of the show are parasites. And parasites are kind of like all the rage right now, right? Everyone loves them. Um, and I just kind of want to give some proper education on them because I think there's a lot of fear around it. Um, I think that people really don't know what to do about them. They're so freaked out a worm's going to come out of their butt at any point in time. It completely prevents some of them forever, forever, forever doing cleansing because they're afraid of that, right? So I really want you guys to kind of not be afraid and be educated. So we're going to start this webinar out with just a little bit of education about parasites. I think the more you guys know, the better you do. So many studies have shown that and shown that and shown that in clients and patients. The more you care and want to know about things and be educated, the more you handle things better, the more you, you do uh, health wise. So an educated patient is usually a really compliant, educated, happy patient who follows through, right? So I hope that you guys find this really helpful tonight. I'm just going to give everyone a couple more minutes to join. But so while we're just kind of vibing out, everyone tell me where they're, they're, they're calling in from tonight. Where are you guys joining this chat from tonight or today, this morning? I guess you guys are all over the world, right? So let me know um, where you're from. Okay, New Hampshire, Michigan. Yeah. Is anyone, I saw a couple people from North Carolina where I am, Wisconsin, Los Angeles, nice, Ohio, Los Angeles again, Florida, London, LA again, Virginia Beach, you're not too far from me, Idaho, awesome, Asheville, no way, go Asheville, that's where I am, upstate New York, Michigan, hi everyone, hello, welcome. Miami, I was just there. Oh my gosh, the weather's gorgeous right now. Wisconsin again, you guys are up in tick country, so it's gonna be really important for you to learn about parasites. Wisconsin, man, you guys make some good raw dairy, but you gotta worry about some parasites, right? <laughs> so, hi everyone, Hawaii, great, Canada. I mean, Australia, loving, loving having you guys. I'm loving, thank you for being here. So first and foremost, um, I want to go over a little education with parasites. So who's had a parasite infection? Do you guys know if you've ever had one? Yes, no. Um, and do you think they're rare? Do you guys think they're rare? I'd love to know how educated my audience is. So if you talk to a lot of Western doctors, they'll say, hey, you know, unless you go to Mexico and get Montezuma's revenge, you're okay with parasites. And it's just baffling to me because it's not like the U.S. has the cleanest food in the world anymore or is like the cleanest country anymore, right? Um, yeah, you guys say 60 to 70% of the population. I think they're common. I think I've had, yes, you guys, yes, yes, and kids too. So yeah, so you guys are a pretty educated audience, you know, more than a lot of medical doctors. So brush your shoulders off, tap yourself on the back. Very good. Because um, you're right about we think approximately over someone's lifetime, 60 to 80% of people will have a parasite at some given time. So you guys are right. Whoever said that stat was correct. So, um, you know, and it's just because we have parasites, it doesn't mean it's necessarily a bad thing, you guys. Parasites are there for a purpose, and I'm actually going to prove it to you in the studies tonight. Um, I'm actually going to prove in the studies that when things are toxic, a toxic terrain makes a toxic germ. So parasites aren't necessarily the enemy. They're there for cleanup of things. So what is in your body 
that is attracting or making your body hospitable to continued parasites, right? If you keep cleansing and they keep coming back and you know you've done it long enough, what is it? Are you stuck in flight or fight? Do you have mold in your house? Um, do you have glyphosate or heavy metals inside of you? Because that is going to be a big reason that parasites would want to stick around, right? And so it's not really parasites' fault. They're there trying to digest something. And so I'm going to, um, you know, flip my screen in a little while and talk about it. First of all, before we get into anything else, I think I've, I've waited long enough for everyone, hopefully, I want to get into just a little bit of, about the different types of parasites. And we'll go over the different symptoms too, right? It's really important to talk about this. And then we'll go over some of the, the, some of the features on Wellness Plus about how you can figure out what parasite you might have, the solutions we have for you guys, and even the testing that we recommend, which is really important. So many people ask me about about parasite testing. And I wish I could just tell you guys, yeah, bingo, this is the answer. And now I feel like I have a better test where I can do that. But before, you know, if you wanted to be accurate, you were looking at, you know, three to four different open parasite stool tests where someone with a naked eye looks through your poo in a, in a culture um, and, and basically just see if anything grows over two weeks as well. And so those are so inaccurate. We have to get multiple ones. Stool tests with the use PCR. Well, hopefully you guys have seen how accurate PCR is over the last two or three years, right? Not so much. So we need upgraded technology, which we do have, and we need it applied to some of these functional tests so you guys can get to the root cause and become your own best doctor. Okay. Save your questions for the end, guys. I'm going to be looking at another screen and some of my notes in just a minute, so I won't be able to see a lot of your questions. Please talk them with each other and educate each other in the chat. I love that. Um, however, if you have questions for me, save it for the end. I will be doing a Q&A with you guys, so I'm going to be answering some of your guys' questions at the end of this presentation. So first and foremost, what are parasites, right? They're, they're literally, they can be microscopic. They can be worms. They can be completely visible to the naked eye, or they can be something called a, a, using a vector, like a tick, for example, right? Um, so, so many of us know these parasites. There also can be people or politicians. So I'm sure many of you guys have met parasitic people in your life, right? Um, they are a real thing. So <laughs> keep that in mind too. Um, you know, the microscopic or the macroscopic mimics the microscopic, right? It's very ironic that way. So there are thousands of different types and species of parasites, but about 30% of them are microscopic. So they are not visible to the naked eye, a human naked eye, right? Um, which is kind of creepy. <laughs> Let's be real. It was just Halloween. We're talking about parasites. It is kind of creepy. But to, and, and you guys have heard of parasites that are microscopic. You've heard of things like malaria or um, babesia. Those are microscopic. And we'll talk about what they're called in just a minute. And then also, if you have or you suspect viral symptoms, whatever you consider a virus is these days, if you have viral symptoms or um, you suspect heavy metals, right, then you are likely to have parasites. And I'll explain that based on the science to you guys. This sounds so woo-woo because doctors don't ever talk about this, but it is rooted in science, you guys, I promise, okay? And lastly, the most woo-woo thing I'm going to say tonight probably is if your symptoms ramp up around the full moon or the new moon or anything like that, there are reasons for that. And the reasons are that um, for the full moon, there's a big bright moon in the sky. And so therefore your body naturally produces less melatonin and more serotonin. Um, serotonin helps to feed the parasites and make them more mobile. Also, parasites often replicate um, and their life cycles mimic the moon cycle. And so people, I'll even hear people say sometimes that their symptoms ramp up around the new moon. And they like, why is that? Everyone talks about the full moon, um, which this is why emergency departments are more busy around the full moon. This is why parasites are very common. And so, you know, if you have symptoms around a new moon, that can also be parasitic in nature as some of the parasites may be replicating more around the new moon and your body feels that, right? Okay, so um, let's talk more about some of, the, some of the different types of parasites here. 
Um, okay, so protozoa is the first type. We've already talked about those. These are the ones that are microscopic, and there's about 30% of them. So it's a decent, decent chunk out of the thousands that are, are not naked or are not seen by our, our, our eye, right? Um, and they're transmitted from person to person through fecal matter, through blood, or through um, insect bites, actually. Many ticks can carry things like Babesia, which is a protozoa that we just talked about right? Babesia actually gets inside red blood cells. It um, is confused on histological slides when you have a histology slide looking at a red blood cell. Histologists will confuse Babesia and malaria because they're so tiny and they both get inside red blood cells and they can shear red blood cells. They can cause things like hemolytic anemia, right? Which is shearing of the red blood cell. They can cause things even looking like odd shaped, you know, burr cells or smudge cells, which is what we call these weirdly shaped red blood cells. What would cause that in the body, right? Things like electromagnetic magnetic radiation have been caused been cause that as well as things like protozoans. So the body is just trying to survive, right? So, you know, some other examples of things like Babesia um, or, or excuse me, things like protozoans are amoebas. Who's heard of amoebas? I've known a few in real life. Um, paramecium, if you've ever heard of paramecium. Trichomonas, which is an STD actually, which can cause a lot of itching um, and um, really vague symptoms for both men and women. Men sometimes don't even have symptoms. Leishmania is another microscopic protozoan. Um, if you guys have heard of Leishmania, it also it often holds viruses, especially something called the LRV virus. And if the parasite is seen to have um, the virus LRV in it, it's known to have more virulence and the infection is worse for people if that virus co parasite combination is present. And that's known in the studies. You can look up Leishmania and then type in LRV virus and see they have a symbiotic relationship to take us down. <laughs> Um, Giardia is another microscopic parasite that you get from drinking creek or uh, lake water or hiking, drinking that water out there, right? And those are basically the most famous protozoans that you guys have heard of, although there are hundreds, almost thousands, right? The next group is helminths, H-E-L-M-I-N-T-H-S, helminths. And helminths are worm parasites. If you guys follow um, Kim, the worm lady, um, Mrs. Rogers Hood online. She does a lot of great education around worms, around parasites. She has a nice parasite kit we'll talk about too um, later, but she's probably on this chat. Hi, Kim. Um, and she does a lot of great education around this. This is kind of her, 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 her bag now because she's very, she had worms, she likes to say. You guys should watch her talk on Wellness Plus. It's really cool because she does a lot of great education. So helmets are worm parasites. Um, they've been found to activate herpes viral infections. Like what? So whatever a virus is, you know, Stefan Lanka claims there are no viruses, but I still have to deal with people with viral symptoms and you guys still have to deal with viruses. So whatever viruses are, they're been known to be activated when parasites are around. So they have this interplay with, with different sides of the immune system, right? And they can kind of, um, you know, really act as frenemies. <laughs> <laughs> to to um, activate one system while the other one's down really cause an imbalance in the immune system so that we're vulnerable and, and viruses can reactivate. That's actually what happened with a lot of the messenger RNA vaccines, right? So what you saw was a lot of reactivation of Epstein-Barr virus. 73% of the long haulers had F uh, reactivation of Epstein-Barr virus. And what they're doing is the vaccine is swinging the immune system. So you have a um, underrepresentation of the Th1 and the, or excuse me, overrepresentation of Th1. The Th2 is underrepresented. You have viruses reactivating, and so that's what you're seeing with CMV, with Epstein Barr, with herpes viruses, too, shingles, right? So all these things is an imbalance in the immune system, and parasites interplay with that, right? That's what they're doing. So um, these are large multicellular organisms um, that are visible to the naked eye. These examples of these are roundworms, pinworms, um, trichina spiralis, tapeworms, and flukes, right? Some of you guys have probably seen liver flukes. They sort of look like um, rolled up tomato skins. Anybody seen those before? 
it's okay. It's okay to be vulnerable here, you guys. We we um, we love to learn from each other. So go ahead and tell us all about um, what you see. Yeah, Kim's here. Hi, Kim. So um, let's see here. So some examples of helmets for you guys. Um, brown worms, like I said, nematodes are one of those. They have a cylindrical body similar to earthworms almost. Um, they can really lead to infection in the intestines, elsewhere in the body. We'll talk about all the symptoms in a minute. Um, liver flukes that look like rolled up tomato skins or carrots. Um, these helmets or trematodes is the um, scientific name for them. They have a really flat body, um, almost like a leaf shape. Um, and they have suckers on them. Sorry, guys. I know this is really gross. They have suckers on them that help them attach. And they generally love the bile ducts. So you'll see a lot of trematodes, those flat looking leaf shaped um, worms, and they want to get inside the bile ducts, the biliary tree, the common bile duct, places like that. Um, and this is where they cause a lot of problems with the gallbladder, right? A lot of gallbladder attacks are due to parasites, guys. Um, they get in um, really the liver and the blood as well. But don't forget the bile ducts. Um, tapeworms. So tapeworms known as cestodes. They're really long segmented flatworms found usually in the intestines where they're stealing all your nutrients. So nutrient deficiencies is definitely one, one consequence of parasites, one symptom that we'll talk about. And we'll talk about specific vitamin deficiencies that um, you can relate straight to parasites. Okay. And then finally, the last thing, thorny headed worms. It's like something out of like Lord of the Rings, like what in the world? Um, thorny headed worms. These helmets, um, and they're, uh, they have this crazy last name, acanthocephalons, right? Um, they have a round body and literal like barbed wire around their head. And they mainly infect animals, so you don't have to worry about them as much. <laughs> Human infection is actually pretty rare. So that's the good news about those, but I wanted to be thorough with my description of parasites with you guys. Um, one example that is pretty famous that you can look to for um, helmets that we just discussed is Ascaricus. Ascaricus is a very common type of an infection with a helmet, and it occurs in humans. And it's caused by a roundworm called Ascaris. Imagine that, A-S-C-R-I-S. Um, and they usually say this will occur in Central America and South America because, you know, parasites know borders. <laughs> the guys don't believe that nonsense. They don't know the difference between Florida or Central America. They just don't. OK, so many people with Ascaricus don't have symptoms. Their body's immune system is on top of it. Right. So it's just kind of this simmering thing they're taking care of or the parasite is helping them with possibly. Um, and severe infection really cause severe abdominal symptoms for people. Ascaricus um, can also migrate out of the intestines, um, leading to a cough that can get up in the lungs. And really, um, even some par parasites can get in the eyes. People think they stay in the intestines. That is not true. They are systemic. They can get in the fascia. They can get in the lymph. They can get in lots of different viscous organs um, that you wouldn't think of. So that's why they cause so many different systemic symptoms that we're getting ready to talk about because they can get everywhere in the body, right? So it's a catch-all for many different symptoms. I hope that makes sense for you guys. Sorry, I feel like I'm doing like an advertisement for Olipop. Okay. Anyway, um, the last type of parasite we're going to discuss is ectoparasites. And ectoparasites really... Many of you guys know what they are already. They're divided into two main groups, arachnids, who Halloween, and insects. So um, the classification is really given based on structural characteristics. Um, and the class of arachnids includes really ticks and mites. So everyone loves ticks. So I often wonder, um, is it possible that they have really just broadened their territory due to climate change, or are they a bi bioterrorism agent? I often wonder. So um, ticks, mites, definitely known to cause disease. Um, and the insect category of ectoparasites includes flies, bed bugs, mosquitoes, fleas, lice. All known to carry their own type of parasites and disease. Many people will tell me they got sick after they stayed in a place that had a bed bug, bed bug infestation. 
or they got sick after they got eaten alive by mosquitoes on vacation. And this is an indication that something was passed on from that ectoparasite, right? And that the immune system was off balance just enough if there was a toxicity that attracted the parasite just enough to really wreak havoc. Does that make sense to you guys? Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, okay. And then let's see. I think that's all the parasites I want to speak with you guys about. Um, let's go move on to the symptoms. And I want to just let you guys know if you logged into Wellness Plus and you are here for the webinar, don't forget to look on the side where there's resources because we have a questionnaire, a parasite questionnaire for you guys, where we're just kind of going to go over symptoms to see um, where you might be have some parasites, right? Um, where you might be stuck. And that's really important to know. And then I'm going to share my screen with you guys in just a minute and um, go over a little bit of some of the science for you guys and a little bit of parasitic things you can find on Wellness Plus as well. Um, I just also wanted to highlight five different parasites before we move on um, that the um, CDC actually um, considers these neglected because there's relatively little attention given to them by textbooks or clinicians, especially in the U.S. So these five parasites are Trypsinoma cruzi. Um, this parasite actually calls us something known as Sh Chagas disease, which is um, we actually took boards and had lots of questions on this one. And they blame Central and South America again. More than 300,000 people in the U.S., however, are infected, and more than 300 infected babies are born every year. So it feeds off the blood and lymph and is found mostly in warm tropical climates. Tinea solium, this is a tapeworm whose larval cysts come from pork. So undercooked pork is a risk. Um, there are at least 1,000 hospitalizations for symptomatic sister sarcosis per year in the U.S., how, and we don't know how many are really undetected, right? Toxicara, this is a parasite found mostly in dogs. So if you let your dog sleep with you, lick you in the face, this is one that you have to be concerned about. Um, Toxoplasmosis gondii, this is one that I feel really goes under the radar. If you change cat's litter boxes, you have likely been exposed. That's why they tell pregnant women not to change cat's litter boxes. Um, and this is a parasite that causes toxoplasmosis. More than 60 million people in the U.S. are chronically infected. Most people never know because their immune system has just got it. But, you know, this one is really connected to things like bipolar disorder. Um, it really affects people's moods. In fact, um, this parasite, if mice get it, it will make them not afraid of cats. So because ultimately this parasite wants in the cat. So it's letting the mice not be afraid so they're eaten by the cats because it wants in the cats. So parasites literally control your thoughts. Okay, guys? Literally control thoughts and cravings, okay? And finally, the last one is trichomonas. Trichomonas, I mentioned earlier, it is a sexually transmitted disease. It affects 3.7 million people in the U.S. And it's easily treated with flagell and some other, or some other herbals but it's really commonly sexually transmitted, which makes you wonder and begs the question, how many other parasites, including Lyme disease or things like Babesia, can be transmitted sexually, right? And I don't know if anyone can give you a straightforward answer with that, you guys. Um, I feel like that is a, a rhetorical question that remains to be seen, unfortunately. I wish I had a better answer, but we just don't know. And the best way to keep yourself healthy is to keep your drainage pathways open and take care of trauma, childhood stress, um, your nervous system, get enough sleep and have community because you want to stay balanced. That's the way to stay healthy, right? So um, so let's go over. So let's go over. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you guys because I want you guys to see this science and I want you guys to see some of Wallace Plus. Okay. Entire screen. Yes. Okay. Hopefully you guys, can you see my screen? Hopefully, I think, yes, you can, perfect. Okay, ha, okay, you guys can see my screen. So here's what I wanna show you is this is the test that I recommend for parasites, first and foremost. Um, actually, let me go over symptoms for you guys first. So you guys actually have seen um, 
You've seen the, the questionnaire we have, this, the questionnaire on the, the resource side of Wellness Plus. So be sure to download that and go over it and go over it with your loved ones because we're giving that to you. But here's just some of the symptoms I want to highlight. There are more. This is just some I want to highlight. So skin rashes such as eczema or hives, um, what's known as bruxism or teeth grinding at night or clenching, TMJ, popping, clicking jaws, sore jaws in the morning can all indicate parasites, especially around a full moon. And the reason this happens is because it's really a stress on the body when you have parasites and they're crawling around in the middle of the night. So your body naturally wants to grind. And so many people will have that symptom. Um, it can be caused by other reasons like stress and airway issues, but this one should not be neglected. Um, dairy sensitivity or lactose intolerance, you're going to see this a lot with strongyloides. Strongyloides also causes horrible PMS for women in cycles. So if you see a lot of horrible PMS issues with women's cycles, look to strongyloides. Um, it really is a big gum that can move all over the body, including the lungs, the lymph, um, the muscles, the fascia, and cause a huge issue with people's systemic health. Um, so that's really important to know that dairy sensitivity can be cause of that or a symptom of that. Migraines are chronic headaches. This is on the liver pathway. So often you'll see headaches and chronic migraines um, due to um, parasites being in the liver and that pathway. Um, sleep issues such as insomnia and poor sleeping habits. It makes sense since parasites are nocturnal. They usually wake up around 7 p.m. for most people and start causing craving issues or um, difficulty sleeping. A lot of people will have that buzzing, humming feeling at night. Um, a lot of people have ear ringing or tinnitus. They might also have severe insomnia and light sleeping where they never get into that restorative deep sleep. POTS, postural orthota orthostatic tachycardic syndrome. Um, this is something that is occurring more and more after COVID and the vaccines, um, but it also can occur due to things like parasites, things like um, Bartonella, which gets inside the blood vessels and or, or Babesia that gets inside the red blood cells can cause issues with people's hearts. Aches and pains, sore joints for no, no reason, especially migrating joint pains, which can indicate Lyme disease as well. Um, these guys are frenemies, don't forget. Weight loss, increased appetite or both. Remember, a lot of these tapeworms um, and helmets are stealing nutrients from you guys. Abdominal pain, diarrhea, vomiting, fatigue, weakness, and just feeling generally unwell. Um, deficiencies in nutrients, and especially iron, you'll see below. The iron level um, can be low because parasites actually eat iron and can just digest iron. And the storage of iron is called ferritin. So ferritin can be low if iron is low because they're eating into your storage of iron, right? Some other things that can be low are things like the B vitamins, B6, B12, copper, vitamin A, um, but we'll talk about some of the things that parasites like to munch on. Um, allergy, allergies in general, parasites push us over to a TH2 dominance, um, just in generally speaking. And that is synonymous with things like um, eczema, hives, allergies. And so you'll see people with vaccine injuries as well as parasitic infections display some of those characteristics. Um, parasites also, if they are an infestation and overrunning the body, not only produce some nasty byproducts, but can cause some mitochondrial toxicity and fatigue because the body is constantly fighting a simmering infection, which is um, so stealthy it's being unnoticed, right? Leaky gut and IBS. A lot of um, leaky gut is often due to parasites because testing is so inaccurate. Um, these often fly under the radar and we just blame bacteria, but many times things like SIBO go hand in hand with parasites. Food cravings, especially for sugar and insatiable hunger. Candida can cause a bit of this too, but so can parasites. Low blood sugar, difficulty fasting. If you guys get hangry or like homicidal, you want to kill your husband or your wife when you go when you have to fast, that lets us know that there is an issue, right? Either mitochondrial, liver, your, your body's having trouble breaking down glycogen to glucose. Um, so interesting to kind of note how you do with fasting. Um, brain fog. Difficulty word recalling, anxiety, mood swings, or depression. Um, and again, bipolar disorder. We've already talked about how things like Bartonella, which is a bacteria, but also toxoplasmosis are um, two infections linked to mental health disorders. 
Um, and especially anxiety. I see a lot of anxiety with parasites, um, difficulty with sleep and anxiety and just gnawing like they could bite through steel with that jaw, right? <laughs> and then finally, lovely to know rectal and anal itching. Of course, you'll see this in a lot of children who have pinworms. Candida can also be a culprit in this as well. Um, but pinworms, just insatiable itching back there. And you'll see it in the children, but usually the whole family gets it because it's super, super, super um, um, infectious. So here's some of the symptoms you can see appropriate for Halloween again. And here's some of the common nutrient deficiencies that parasites might cause. I mentioned a lot of them for you. B6 is another one that you'll see a lot too. Um, and they really do cause a lot of this. If you guys are eating a wonderful diet, and you're like, what gives, you know, vitamin, they even even can lower vitamin D. You know, what is, what gives? It's like, I can't absorb things. There's one of two things, either parasites or another infection are digesting some of your minerals, um, or you have so much inflammation from said infections that you aren't absorbing properly, right? So I don't do a lot of mineral deficiency tests. I look further beyond that to root causes. Why aren't you absorbing? There's nothing wrong with your body. You know what I mean? Um, is there something in the way? Um, you know, so that I'm always looking for deeper answers for you guys because I don't feel feel like your body's always trying to do what's best for you. We just live in a very toxic environment and have blamed the wrong things. So, you know, here I talk about a lot of um, different infections, right? And here's the cycle of a beef tapeworm, for example. You guys can see they move from different animals and in different parts of the body as well. All right, so let's look at some of the, um, the science I wanted to show you guys. So this is a very amazing study. This was done in 2016. And look, viruses of parasites as actors in the parasite-host relationship, a menage a trois, if you will. <laughs> so this is interesting. I, I actually want to read part of this to you guys here. The complex parasite-host relationships involves multiple mechanisms. Moreover, parasites infected by viruses. So I just told you guys that if you have problems with viruses like herpes, HPV, we need to look to parasites. And here's the evidence is why. So pay attention, right? Um, viruses infecting parasites were described several decades ago. However, until recently, little was known about the viruses involved and their impact on the resulting disease caused to the host. To clarify this situation, we have now concentrated on parasitic diseases caused to humans and how viruses infected parasites could alter the symptoms inflicted on their human host. It is clear that the effect caused to the human host depends on the virus and the parasite it has infected. So they go on to say <coughs> parasites infected by viruses have detrimental effect on the tandem virus parasite on the human host. They hi are hyper virulent, which means that when you find a virus that is infecting a parasite, the parasitic infection will be worse. Or sometimes they can decrease the virulence of the parasite. So they literally have communication be between each other. Right? So in some cases, the virus infected parasite might facilitate the transfer of the virus to the human host. Wow. So some parasites help you get a virus. <clears throat> COVID definitely saw people with Lyme and parasites more, in fact, more affected. So if you guys have trouble with the stubborn subtypes of um, human papillomavirus or HPV 16 and 18, or you have trouble with cold sores or herpes simplex virus too, right? That's an STD. STD. The, the better chance of you getting rid of those stubborn infections is to parasite cleanse and cleanse your terrain or body because there's something attracting those parasites which have viruses hidden inside of them. Does that make sense to you guys? Isn't that wild? One last study for you guys. Environmental parasitology. This was written in 2019. Intestinal helminth parasites of the signoid fish Cygnus revoltus as bioindicators for trace metal pollution in the Red Sea. Now, what this is saying, guys, is that the parasites are more commonly found in the environment, and specifically the Red Sea, when they find toxins there, specifically heavy metals, okay? That's crazy. So, you know, when you see the Red Sea affecting oceans or things like that, it's there because of toxins and heavy metals. They are there for cleanup. 
So if you are having consistent parasitic infections in your body, you need to look what is attracting them. What toxins, cadmium in this one, right? Cadmium in intestines and liver of mussels, non-infected infected fish were much lower than those of lead, blah, 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 right? So they're finding things inside the fish and inside the Red Sea that are attracting the parasitic infections for cleanup. More on this, because I wanted to show you guys about heavy metals really quickly, right here. Parasites as accumulation indicators of heavy metal pollution. Parasites increasing interest in parasite, parasite ecologists as potential indicators of environmental quality because of the variety of ways in which they respond to anthropogenic pollution. And however, until recently, little was known about the accumulation of toxins within parasites. Certain parasites, particularly intestinal acanthocelephons and cestodes of fish, these type of parasites, can accumulate heavy metals at concentrations that are orders of magnitude higher than those in the host tissues of the environment. So what they're saying here is that there's certain parasites that live inside fish and they can accumulate such high levels of heavy metals that normally the fish wouldn't be able to live with that amount of heavy metals inside of them. But because they are being eaten by parasites, the parasites are able to digest the pollution around them and for them. Does that make sense to you guys? So if you are full of heavy metals, you're full of glyphosate, you're full of pesticides, you're full of VOCs, you're full of phthalates and parabens, man-made lotions, shampoos, conditioners, fabric softeners, Tide detergents, um, you know, Febreze, live near a highway, there's, you live in a big city, there's pollution everywhere, you're going to have more trouble getting rid of parasites. Not because you're a victim or God hates you or there's anything wrong with your body literally because you have a higher toxin load in your terrain and they're there for cleanup. Okay. So I'm giving you guys super secret hints about how to get hold of, get rid of them here. Here's the test I recommend for some people. It's really important to know what they're dealing with. For me, I can screen a lot of those symptoms and say, let's go for it. Let's cleanse. Let's get rid of them. Right. For some people, that's not good enough. They really want to know what they're dealing with and everyone's different. And I respect each of your, whatever you guys want. This test is amazing. Thank you, Kim Rogers, for showing me this test. I don't think Kim would mind me telling you guys that she got parasites from her well water. And so out of necessity um, was born her company, which is beautiful. She alchemized that really fast. And um, she tested with Quest and LabCorp. And guess what? They came back completely normal. Um, this test from Evan, who's an MD, PhD, is called parasites.org. Um, it tests, as you can see, for 31 different gut parasites, five different gut fungus, 12 different bacteria, and 11 markers of digestive health. They really um, use updated technology so that you guys don't, they don't miss things for you guys like the regular labs do, because they, these things are been around as long as we have these parasites. Do you think they are bad at their job? They're not bad at hiding from us. They don't want to be caught. They want to live with us forever, guys. So here's what this test looks for. You can see the different bacteria that it checks for here, right? A lot of different virulent pathogenic bacteria. There are 17 different parasitic worms it looks for here. These, some of these were on the CDC's list of um, worrisome um, roundworms and tapeworms, as you guys can see, right? We talked about a lot of these, right? So you guys can see it checks for a lot of these different things. Here are the ones that are that are microscopic, right? And different yeasts. They came up with mine, candida in parentheses, dividing. I was like, oh, great. That's awesome. And different digestive markers to kind of let you know how your digestive tract is handling all of this, right? If you guys sign on to Wellness Plus, you, you save $80 on this test, which is cheaper almost then two months of water plus. <laughs> but um, yeah, we're trying to save you guys lots on this test. If you decide to become part of our tribe, we really want to offer you guys um, what we think are the best and most updated technology and tests um, and a, a little gift for being with us, right? So we try and get you guys some, some decent um, savings here from our store and our bedded products. Um, as you guys can see, on Wellness Plus, and stay with me. I'm going to do the Q&A in just a minute, you guys. 
Um, as you guys can see here, we have a course on hidden metal, hidden enemies, parasites, and heavy metals. And I go over a lot of that science with you guys here. We go over a lot of different parasites, the best herbs and diet, heavy metal overview, how it affects the thyroid, different heavy metals, and really best tests and treatments here. As you can see, we have a lot of different additional resources for what we recommend. Um, so you have the best bet at getting rid of the parasites that may be hanging around when we don't need them to. Other than the course, you can see we have the gut zoomer also tests for parasites. However, parasites.org is my favorite. Um, the gut zoomer is my favorite for bacteria and fungus. Um, parasite questionnaire, you guys have gotten, we have a lot of different quickies, recause quickies about parasites um, and how you can look at them. Of course, Dr. Um, Ms. Kim Rogers, Parasite Parify Kit, her Parasite Kit, which is a great kit with a lot of different um, natural herbs targeted at specific parasites. Um, my microbiome, um, excuse me, Gut Hero, which is microbiome support, um, formulated for soul is also another great way to put parasite cleanse with wormwood, cloves, um, uva ursi, some other things. Um, Parasite.org test. We also have a bunch of articles concerning parasites, like tons and tons and tons, as you guys can see. Um, we really want our people who are on here to be educated about parasites and why we think they're a root cause. Someone asked about Hashimoto's. Absolutely. Parasites can be linked to Hashimoto's. So can mold as well. And like I said, some of these things run together. They're really hard to separate. Mold spores can actually be hidden in parasites too. So that's usually one of the first things we try to address with people. We pull the layers of the onion back are what are the parasites um, looking like, right? So you guys can see we have a lot of things here and a lot of different articles. We have our, an article written every single day um, <clears throat> and some infographics as well, right? Um, so you guys drive a lot of this journey and what you want to see here, but that's Wellness Plus. Um, and just just the um, the course alone is, an, is um, about, let's see, I don't want to lie to you guys. How long is it? 45 minutes, right? So I give you guys a lot of... Um, Western medicine and Eastern medicine ways to treat. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing now and shut up <laughs> with you guys and just kind of, um, hold on, where are you? There you are. Um, just kind of come back over and answer some of your guys' questions now. Um, and so um, you hang with me. I know there are a lot of you guys on here. I'm going to try and answer as many as I can in the next 15 minutes with you guys. Um, but I hope that that I answered a lot of questions. I think knowledge can be scary, but it can also help you get the answers you need and be the push you need to maybe do that cleanse you've been looking for or um, really address those symptoms that have been bothering you, right? Um, so if you've been kind of like, I don't know what to do about my health. I don't know what these vague symptoms mean. If um, you have things like, you know, teeth grinding, digestive issues, um, systemic just brain fog and fatigue and muscle twitching, rectal itching, ha rashes, you know, really need to look into parasites and autoimmunity in general has a link to parasites. Um, I can't point all health conditions on that, but a lot of them, you guys. Okay. So let's see. Can coffee enemas remove parasites? They will give you a higher likelihood. Again, parasites are pretty stealthy. For a lot of them that are inside red blood cells, it's not going to get rid of those protozoans, right? Um, they need more than that. You need herbs that can get inside red blood cells to target those or, you know, different IVs that can go inside red blood cells to target those. So that's the one you're going to have trouble with, right? The protozoans, tapeworms, helmets, things like that, roundworms, you're going to have a little bit easier time with, especially if you've paired the coffee enemas with some sort of detox or cleanse. Okay. How long does it take to heal parasites? Three months, question mark. So everyone always wants this black and white reductionist answer with medicine, and I wish I could give it to you guys, but everyone's so different. So, you know, if we get rid of the toxins in your body, sure, three months. But if you guys are still living in a moldy house, you're living in flight or fight all the time, um, you're working in a moldy building, you know, you're using toxic hair, skincare products, it may be a little harder to get rid of them. Now, remember, a lot of parasites have life cycles where they lay eggs and larvae, right? I know you guys. But um, if that's the case, we really want to be sure we're getting all the eggs and larvae, right? And sometimes that can take up to six months for people. I have even cleanse people for eight months on parasite cleanses before, under guidance, of course. And really, in Wellness Plus, you have, we have a community forum where you can ask 
um, you know, four different doctors, including me, um, your questions as you're cleansing. So it's not like you aren't, aren't being able to have someone respond to you within 48 hours or so on our site. So I would say it's very hard to know if, um, if and when you're done, if you're not seeing a practitioner or on Wellness Plus, right? Um, otherwise, I would say three to four months is a, is a great time frame for people doing a parasite cleanse on their own, right? Okay. Um, can decreased eyesight be due to parasites? So I often say eye twitches, recurrent eye twitches and things like that can be a problem. Um, really, I have seen resident scans show crazy things like parasites from Africa that get in the eye for people. But unless there's a lot of eye twitching and symptoms or people have been um, to Africa where these things do happen, it's hard for me to believe. Um, they can, there are parasites that can definitely get in the eyes, but it is more of a rare occurrence. Um, I would say it's more common to have thread worms and things like that in the nasal cavities. Um, but yes, this can happen to people. It ha can and has happened. Is there a connection between parasites and canker sores? I've had them chronically and no practitioner could give me answers. Yes. And here's the connection. Anything that steals your vitamins, right, is going to kind of cause some cracked skin, cracked teeth, um, vitamins and minerals, a lot and a deficiency in them are often what causes that and as well as canker sores. And so, yes, that often means you're having poor absorption of something like vitamin C, vitamin A. So I would just kind of have those checked and look into that and make sure that you don't have other symptoms of parasites. If you can match that up, you may want to consider doing cleanse. I mean, our indigenous relatives did cleanses at least two, three times a year. Um, just because they knew living in the environment we were exposed to things, right? So, okay, let's see. Parasites in toddlers and children, how to cleanse them. So I get this question a lot. Unfortunately for you guys, I do not see children. If they don't talk to me or tell me what's wrong, I'm out. Um, but I would say for children, I really like microbe formulas. Cell core biosciences is also okay for, okay for children. Um, they do, which you guys have premier access to on Wellness Plus. It's one of the things you guys get is my practitioner code and 20% off permanently in my full script store. Like that never changes. So um, with Cellcore, you start with um, half a cap per 50 pounds of most of their supplements. And you absolutely can safe to parasite cleanse children, even biocidin, LSF. I really love biocidin. Um, the liposomal formula called LSF is safe for kids. It tastes great. Um, it really gets inside the red blood cells, right? And the biofilm buster in that is our essential oils. So that's great for people who have suspect things like Babesia or amoebas or something like that. Um, if you suspect just intestinal problems and worms, I would go with biocide and regular um, the capsules or just the liquid, which is able to treat intestinal things better. And then the Parify kit that Kim makes is also safe for children as well. So, um, and she actually gives instructions on her kit for kids, I believe too, so that make it easy. So there's three different options for you guys. I hope, and that goes for human adults too. So if you guys are looking for parasite cleanses, those are really my favorite. You guys have just kind of heard my favorite. Okay. Can tremors and muscle twitching be from mold or parasites and how to heal? Absolutely. Um, that's one of my questions for people is, do you have like muscle twitches and fasciculations, especially at night, starting after like 7 p.m. when parasites wake up? Do you experience some of those, those fasciculations or just like recurrent twitches over and over? Um, for like two weeks, I had my left shoulder twitching and I was like, oh my God, it's freaking me out. I need to do a cleanse. So like it could not get it to stop. Now my vitamin and mineral deficiencies can do that sometimes to people too. But if it's a thing where it's occurring more frequently around full moons, more frequently at night, that's when, <clears throat> excuse me, you guys need to look at things like parasites. Okay. Super weight gain, no matter what I do. So I can't blame parasites completely. Mold can definitely do this and is probably more of a culprit than even parasites um, and also trauma. So if you have had a lot of trauma, you're doing trauma work, a lot of people gain weight during that. It's a protective mechanism for the body to feel safe sometimes for people, especially if they've had sexual trauma or trauma with the opposite sex or, you know, romantically in any way. So 
I can't completely blame parasites with that, but there's something setting off um, a bunch of inflammatory cascades in your body, likely appropriately. So look to your environment to see what could be doing that. Um, can the prescription medbendazole get rid of most kinds of parasites? So medbendazole is a great choice. I actually work more with finbendazole, um, which I would I would see people in pan cancer groups, Facebook groups, be taking that and pooping out worms and saying they were help it was helping reverse a lot of their cancer. And you know, cancer can be a TH2 dominance. <clears throat> it can be due to a parasitic infestation. In um, other cases, it's not. Right, so we can't put everyone in the same box, but medbendazole can get rid of some. They have some sort of spectrum. You could definitely Google and see exactly what spectrum they cover. But most of the prescriptions have more targeted treatments for certain parasites. Right? Yeah. How many times do you need to do a parasite cleanse? It depends on the person and their exposures. But our indigenous relatives did it two to three times per year. I've been parasite cleansing for two years with Cellcor. Remove mercury fillings in the last six months, still passing a ton of parasites. Would you recommend doing a mercury test? You know, did you have your mercury removed safely or unsafely? So if you had it removed by a regular dentist and they didn't have, you know, hazmat suit on and suction, then they removed them unsafely. And yes, you're going to be dealing with that for like probably 18 months if they remove them unsafely. If they remove them safely, you still could have had a very mild exposure, but nothing like the other way. Um, so it could often be other heavy metals too. You know what I mean? Remember that mimosa pudica seed, it kind of swells up like one of those kids sponges in the, in the bath. So it can reach out and grab things. And it looks a lot like, um, intestinal biofilm to people or a row form. Um, so if you're on cell core and you're taking pair one, just know that it can kind of fool people into thinking it's a worm when it's really, um, mimosa pudica seed gra grabbing things like a sponge. So um, I would definitely look into other exposures that you might be having. Okay, what causes cherry angiomas? Not really related, but bromide. Um, I have been detoxing for too long, caused all low hormones. Yeah, I mean, definitely detoxing and running yourself ragged um, and worrying about getting everything done can burn people out. So it's all about balance. Um, and it's more about drainage, right, guys, than detoxing. It's way more about drainage. So I definitely wouldn't parasite cleanse without having your drainage pathways open. We did a free webinar on that one last time. So if you haven't seen that one, it might be worth it. We also stress drainage heavily on Wellness Plus. So, um, you know, if you guys don't understand what drainage is, go back, watch that webinar, hop on Wellness Plus. Um, we have a whole course and whole instructions about how to open drainage with every single drainage pathway. So that way, parasite cleansing isn't a miserable experience for you guys. Okay. Um, can rifaximine get rid of some parasites? I saw strange white rice looking things in stool. So rifaximine it treats small intestinal bowel um, obstruction. It works great. For some people, it does have about a 50% relapse rate. Um, so it's not my first choice for treating anything, to be honest with you. Um, it, it could have been treating candida you know, um, or some of the bacteria that can be visible, or excuse me, some of the bacterial things. And I guess it could have been a parasite, candida at the most, bacteria definitely not visible. So, um, you know, it could have been candida, it could be undigested things because you're taking antibiotic, it's pushing things out. Um, it's hard to say. Um, can non-pharmacal, can non-pharmaceutical approach really treat strong aloides? Yes, that is the whole reason that Dr. Todd Watts created Cellcor, which successfully and finally treated his strong aloides through use of Para-1 or this really sticky mimosas pudica seed that no one else has figured out how to encapsulate well. So that's what ended up curing his strong aloides. And for years he was sick and almost bedridden. So again, company built porn out of necessity, right? Was so poor, and he had to figure out a way to fix his own strong aloides because none of the other medications were working. Um, if parasites cause symptoms that restrict drainage pathways from opening, i.e., constipation, how do you prepare for a detox? Well, doing nothing is going to be worse. So, um, you know, cell cord has phase one. We're also creating a wellness plus um, protocol with all my favorite ways to open drainage pathways. So, herbs can do a great job, right? Um, parasites can block things. Herbs can do a great job in blocking things for people. Um, coffee enemas and block vowels, right? 
sweat and blocks this uh, block, uh, block sweat pathway. It's just a matter of being proactive. Okay. And convince my mother-in-law has parasites causing idiopathic subglottic sub stenosis. Do you think that's possible? I do. A lot of parasites can live in the esophagus, um, in the trachea, in the lungs, in the digestive cavity. They can crawl all over the place like that. Um, stenosis means, um, so down here, the subglottic stenosis is definitely um, causing problems like likely with swallowing and issues eating. And so that stenosis, it's hardening around a valve that's supposed to be opening and closing, basically, um, or sphincter. And so um, that's going to be, yeah, something to look into for sure. Something to look into. Um, let's see. Um, what do we need to do before cleansing for parasites? I have had Hashimoto's and long haulers COVID and I want to understand how to prepare my body for a cleanse. I'm almost certain I have parasites now. Yeah. Right. It's like, we it seems like we've all had those symptoms at some point. So, um, drainage pathways, as I just mentioned, I would go, I would definitely look into joining wellness plus where we have a whole course that kind of educates you on how to know where and if you're blocked. Um, <clears throat> I also really talk about that for free online a lot. Um, about block drainage pathways and what to do about it. You really want to make sure it's usually, it's not as much about supplements. It's more about extracurricular activities. I like to call it, or picking one to two things per day to keep open, you know, things for the lymph, the liver, the bowels, the sweat pathway. And there's ways to evaluate that and ask yourself questions. Um, we did that webinar last time, but that is definitely to prep before any sort of parasite cleanse. Okay. Can parasites co-infect with a salmonella infection? Absolutely. Um, we've already seen what they can do with heavy metals <clears throat> and viruses. I have no doubt that when you guys go and you eat or drink something that's new for you in a place that your microbiome probably hasn't seen before, if you're out of balance, then for sure it can cohabitate or jump on board with a salmonella infection. They definitely can um, kind of imbalance the immune system together and work together to get on top of you. Um, and make you a host, right? And that's what they want. So I don't doubt that that can happen at all. Yeah. Can Bartonella or parasites cause pain in the feet, shins, pain down the leg, like sciatica? Yes. So Bartonella especially causes pain in the soles of the feet. Um, it can cause like this tickling, crawling feeling too. Um, it can also cause a lot of shin splint activity or pain in the shins. It causes this rash that sort of looks like um, stretch marks a little bit. Um, even cherry angiomas sometimes can be thought to be Bartonella and Babesia, but honestly, I think that's more of a bromide based on the based on some of the studies. Um, yeah, definitely, I would consider something like Bartonella for that. Um, how do you go deep for? Let's see, how do you go deep for the hard to get parasites after the big sixteen month cleanse that contributes to MS? How do you go deep? I'm not sure I answered understand the question. I'm sorry. Um, okay. Can nursing moms cleanse? I definitely wouldn't do a parasite cleanse while nursing. I would wait until I'm done. Um, unless, you know, the symptoms really outweigh the risk of the, of the parasite cleanse. If it's just a want, you're not like bed bound or anything, I wouldn't. Um, do parasites cause more symptoms around the end of a menstrual cycle? So they can take advantage. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. Woo. They can take advantage of the immune system when the hormones are askew because things are imbalanced again. So they flare and act up when things are imbalanced in your body, your thoughts, your immune system, toxin levels. That's when they flare and take advantage. So definitely if you have toxins in your body, your, your hormones are imbalanced, then they are going to take advantage of that time for many people. Yeah. Um, let's see, are parasites that target kidneys cause IgA nephropathy? I actually think that's more mold, um, but parasites often run with mold. Lyme often runs with mold. A lot of these things run together, so it'll be worth looking into um, for sure. Um, I've been feeling very sensitive when I do parasite cleanses. Yeah, that's common. Can parasites cause high heart rate out of the blue? They can. Yeah, they can. They are definitely responsible for causing a lot of POT symptoms. So they can cause high heart rates, especially if the body is seeing them in the circulatory system or in the vagus nerve. Um, it is reacting appropriately, right? Okay, guys, a couple more questions. Can parasites cause floaters in the eyes? Lyme disease absolutely can. So yes, parasites can too sometimes. Even though it's a little more rare, they can do things like that. 
I have undigested food in my stool and I have severe reflux, gastritis, esophagitis. Could these be parasites also have an increase in the red dots of my body? Yes, this could be parasites. Definitely digestive issues of all types can be parasites. Irritable bowel syndrome is often parasites. SIBO, although it's caused by bacteria, often has a component of parasites with it. So definitely any sort of, and any sort of eosinophilia or high eosinophils is, 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 is Eosinophilic esophagitis, all due to parasites. That's parasites. Okay. Um, if parasites like worms are still inside a person, why would the person lose weight? I understand they can still nutrients, but if they are still inside a person, it seems like the weight would stay the same or increase due to hunger. No. <laughs> no, they still nutrients. They actually steal your food. So you are literally wasting away. So, okay. Can parasites cause high blood pressure? Um, if it's a stress in the body, that is possible for sure. And last question, can babies cleanse? Um, I'm not sure you'd want to cleanse a baby. No, I mean, I would not wait. I would wait until they can take pills and swallow liquids and things like that. So definitely wait. Um, okay, guys. So definitely. Um, that's it for questions tonight. I hope this helps everyone um know a little bit more about parasites if you guys have more questions um definitely think about parasite testing um by joining wellness plus you get 80 dollars off parasites.org test which is the best test we can vet for parasites right now um we also have some amazing parasite kits from gentle to um more efficacious and um more for the advanced detoxer so um look into wellness plus we have vetted products we have doctors answering you on a forum and we have webinars like this every two weeks, and I call someone on for a consult in front of everyone every other week. So really the only way you guys can still get a consult with me. So I hope to see you guys over there. I hope this was great information for you. Hope you learned a little bit and you'll show it to your loved ones. Um, you'll come back for the mold webinar if we have it. I'd love to have you guys back and answer some more of your questions. Um, thanks for hanging with me. And I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your evening, your day, your morning, wherever you are. See you on Instagram.